the whole theater is basically packed with people right now. I would guess that there are about 600 people here watching and probably a couple of thousand more on the internet stream and probably a couple of million in Korean television. All right, here we see a picture of Lost Temple, which is basically the most familiar boot war map ever made. Every boot war player basically knows it. So there's nothing much to say about it, except the special feature of the Zerg against Terran matchup, which would be if Zerg is at 12 and Terran at 3, or vice versa, which completely changes the matchup because Zerg won't be able to fast expand on these, sp uh, on these spots. Okay, I think the match will be starting in a few seconds. We are basically just waiting for the commentators to finish their announcements. Okay, and, uh, until the game starts, I might say some... some uh, something more about Blackman. He actually does not have an internet connection at home. What he does is that he uh, programs the AI of StarCraft Boot War to use build orders from Boxer, Nada, Nara, and so on. And he actually practices against the computer all the time at home. And sometimes he um, takes a bus to a nearby internet cafe in his home in Poland, which takes about one hour, and he practices there online. But most of the time he practices at home against his own computer with a specially programmed AI. That's quite amazing. He must be quite a smart guy to be able to program the StarCraft AI on his own. Now having seen Blackman play today, I have to agree with uh, the opinion of many people that he is the strongest Zerg player outside of Korea. I actually think that in Zerg against Terran and Zerg against Protoss, he is basically the best Zerg player in the world together with Yellow. Okay, the game is starting right now. Boxer having picked Terran and Blackman having picked Zerg. The map is WCG Lost Temple. And there we go. Ah. Okay, let me say something about the starting positions. Boxer is Terran at 12 o'clock and Blackman is Zerg at 9 o'clock. And as I think these positions are kind of balanced, so there's no unfair disadvantage for any of the two players. And this is actually what I hoped would happen, because this would mean that we will have a uh, quite close and tense match, hopefully. As far as I know, Blackman's strategy is uh, going to fast expand, followed by... Uh, a spawning pool, of course. He owes gas quite late. And he usually he tries to get a third hatchery before he has um, finished his lair. But on these positions, Boxer being at 12, he might be forced to play a little bit more conservative and defensive. Because there is an opportunity for Boxer to... Uh, Rush Blackman, either really early on with a couple of STVs and just play Marines, or a little bit later with Marines and Medics. Blackman just sent a scouting overlord to the 6 o'clock position, and he didn't discover Boxer there, because Boxer's at 12, obviously. So his overlord is now moving to the 3 o'clock position, and the second overlord, no, it's actually a drone, it might be a scouting drone. Yes, I'm quite sure it's a scouting drone. That's a good move to make. Because if Boxer would, like, double Rex him on 8 really early, he could discover it. Oh, actually, it's not a scouting drone. I'm sorry. But it's quite an early expansion. It's probably 9 hatch, if I count the drones. No, it was a 10 hatch. 
Blackman wants 10 hatchery at his expansion. So he's probably going to follow with the pool immediately. No, he's not. I have to say, that's a strange build order. Well, uh, at least I can say that this early hatchery allows him to get an early sunken colony as well. Which might be his plan against a potential bunker rush. S yet no spawning pool. And there comes the spawning pool. Now, so if Boxer decides to bunker rush him right now, um, Blackman can rely on the fact that he can get sunken colonies really, really early at his expansion because he went for the hatchery that early. Yeah, the hatchery is almost finished. And there's yet no sign of Boxer scouting SCV. And Boxer does not send his marines to um, Blackman's base. So I'm quite sure he's not going to bunker rush. Now Blackman transfers drones to his expansion, basically to increase his mining efficiency and also to be able to defend with drones if needed. And he might be going for a, squeep, for a creep colony right away. Oh, Boxer sends his two marines to, I think, yes, to, to scout for overlords. And I think, yeah, he will see Blackman's overlord, actually. But if Blackman is careful, he won't lose it. And there's Blackman scouting drone inside of Boxer's base. I don't know if Boxer has started gas. Yes, Boxer has started gas yet. Oh, there's the Overlord in danger. And the audience is applauding. They might be a little bit biased. Oh, this is going to be quite close. No, the Overlord is definitely going to die to the two Marines. Oh, uh, I don't know what's so special about this move, actually. It's quite common. Actually, since everyone here is biased against Blackman, I should be against Boxer. But I'm trying to stay neutral. So Boxer's scout SCV is inside Blackman's base. It sees a morphing layer. And quite a few drones. Mind that Blackman didn't go any circling so far. He just goes drones in the sunken colony. And this is quite good actually because in this case the having lost one of his overlords is not that painful. And if you look at Blackman's sunk placement, there is some room for the Marines to run through probably. There are two links just to chase the scouting SCV away. And to give Boxer something to micro basically. To take some of his time away from him. And Boxer just keeps sending his marines around the map. He's probably looking for overlords and scouting units and things like that. I'm still really not convinced by Blackman's one sunken. Because it's not well placed. It's a little bit too high. So he might be in trouble right now. Oh, there, there's a second sunk. Oh yeah, okay. That's fine. He will get the second sunken perfectly in time. I mean, that's the one advantage if you actually practice at home against the exact build out of a Slayer's Boxer all the time. With an uh, especially programmed AI. So you obviously wouldn't be surprised by any early attacks of Boxer. And Boxer's not going to do any damage here at Blackman's expansion. He's going for Starport and Factory. He decides not to get a machine shop. So he's just going for Vessel right away. Oh, and he might be tempted to... to attack. No, he doesn't. Blackman seems a little bit nervous. I mean, there are just two medics there, and two medics with a bunch of marines um, can do absolutely nothing against three sunkens. But now it's four medics, so it, it gets more dangerous by now. But Blackman has four sunkens, so it's, he's pretty much safe. I don't know... If I think Boxer's getting a dropship, yes. So he might be trying the quite cheap trick to um, lift his whole marine and medic force up to Blackman's plateau just using a single dropship. And if Blackman doesn't get Lurkus in time, he's in big trouble. The dropship is not finished yet. It's about to... Oh, there's a dropship! Oh, I think Blackman might be dying right now. Because I didn't see any morphing lurkers. 
He does have a Sun Colony in his main base, though. Oh, and Boxer lifts up his entire army to his plateau. And there's the first Morphing Lurker, so this is going to be really close. It's going to be close. Basically, the Lurker morphed just in time. And so far, Blackman didn't lose a drone. But he's taking some damage, and he has to take care of his Lurker. Oh, the Lurker just died. Oh, the Sun Colony is about to die as well. And there's another Lurker. Oh. oh no, the Lurker dies as well. So this is pretty much a good game, I would say. Because Lurk, um, Boxer's Micro against Lurkers is quite amazing. So Blackman will have a hard time to stop Boxer with just these two Lurkers. Oh, that it was quite close actually. Still one Lurker left. Ah, Blackman is actually surviving that attack. No, he loses another Lurker probably. No, he doesn't. Oh, this is pretty close. Oh, losing three drones there. And he is under heavy pressure. He is under really heavy pressure. Oh, and Boxer doesn't pay attention here. So he gets chased away. I have to say, the audience is really annoying me. They should just shut up, basically, because it's just really difficult to focus here as a player. I mean, if I was playing down there, I would get really annoyed because of that. It's just not really fair. There's Boxer's Vessel. I don't see, though, what one Vessel and some Marines and Medics can do against three Lurkers. Boxer might... Oh, there's another Lurker, but it's just a single... Oh, he loses more drones. Ah, uh, I think there's... Ah... Uh, the Lurker wasn't placed too well. I have to say, Boxer's micromanagement is just amazing. He kills Lurkers like nothing. Ah, now he has only three Marines left. Two Marines left. But Blackman has taken heavy damage. Oh, he's dropping there. But Boxer is prepared. Boxer is prepared. And oh, the Overlord dies. But Boxer was really well prepared with three tanks and a bunker as well. The two Marines are still inside of Blackman's base. Boxer's just really annoying Blackman from the start on. And there goes another Lurker. Oh my god, this is pretty, pretty amazing. And a Hydrolis dies as well. I've rarely seen like so such a small number of Marines doing so many so much damage to. A Zerg player. Ah, there goes the final marine. So, hmm. Blackman is safe for the moment, but if we have a look into Boxer's base. He has got three... Oh, he does not have that many troops, actually. I was thinking he had more. I might have missed something, though. Let's see. I think he has about ten marines and medics and three tanks. That's not too much. So, Blackman is back into the game. He is back into the game. And if Boxer gives him the chance to use his enormous macro, man macro management skills right now, then Boxer might get into trouble quite fast. You see, Boxer, uh, Blackman has just expanded to the top left island. And he's trying to get two more expansions anytime soon. He has got drop, so Boxer has to Pay attention to possible drops. 
But Boxer does discover Black Man's Island expansion. I'm actually wondering if Slayer's Boxer can hear the commentators. Because if he can hear the commentators, then, um, well, it's pretty much unfair because he can then hear where Blackman tries to expand. So, hopefully he can't. I'm not too sure. He has quite, quite big headphones, but the commentators are quite loud as well. So Blackman gets two expansions at the right side of the screen. And Boxer scouts the bottom. So... Well... Well, if Boxer is going straight to the right-hand side now, I think he might just be hearing what the commentators say. But the commentators hopefully don't give away the positions of the expansions. There is something on the right side of the map. Oh! Boxer is trying to drop... He has a drop ship somewhere, but I can't see where it is now on the mini-map. It's just moving around the center of the map, and now it's like basically standing there, not doing anything. Oh, there are two science vessels of Boxer. He's trying to do the irradiate trick to um, kill Blackman's drones at his expansion. Oh, and there he discovers Blackman's hatchery. Uh, oh, he's going to drop on the. He's going to drop Blackman's base, and on the same at the same time, he's probably doing the. He radiate a sold to Blackman's expansion. The observer doesn't notice it, hopefully Blackman does. Because if he doesn't, he is losing all his probes, all his drones at this expansion. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's pretty much good game. That's pretty much good game. Blackman's Hatchery dies to a small group of boxers, marines and medics. His lurkers are too late to defend. There's another Hatchery though. But Blackman has probably lost 12 drones at his expansion. He didn't notice um, boxers' vessel attack. Oh, and there's a drop at his new expansion. Oh. I have to say that Boxer is playing absolutely amazing here. He's playing really amazing. No wonder that he could beat Yellow so easily. He's back at top shape. He's just about to win the winner back his final. Boxer's at two bases and Blackman is at two bases. But Blackman has lost so many drones already. And Boxer is probably having two factories right now. Going mass tanks and marines and medics and even more drops even more drops while blackman's drops get wasted by turrets oh and there's a tank drop on blackman's list but blackman has dropped himself so this drop shouldn't do too much damage well there's there are not many drones left to damage in the first place so, Blackman's force is actually too tiny to be able to defend a frontal attack by Boxer right now. Oh. The audience is laughing at it because Boxer just moved his dropship away again. And Boxer is getting two more command centers. One at the 3am main. And one close to his mineral only to float it over there. Mm, Blackman does have about 10 lurkers and... What is it, 10 lurkers? Can't see it. Oh yeah. Probably about 8 lurkers and a couple of hydras. And he's trying to expand the island again. Well, the observer would be really nice if he showed us Ox's army. I think it's about to move to the center. It's five tanks and a couple of marines and medics. Is it just five tanks? Oh, yes. Hmm. This is probably going to be close if Blackman doesn't mess up. But he does mess up. He messes up his control. But he kills the science vessel. Oh, come on, kill that hydralis. Oh. 
No, he loses. He basically wastes his troops. And in such a situation, this might cost him the game. He has done that in the game against the Ranger as well. But in the game against Ranger, he had so many expansions that it didn't really matter. And now he's in big, big trouble. He might be going for fast guardians at the moment. He, he went to Hive. And Boxer only has one vessel. So if he manages to get fast guardians, then oh no, it's Defilus. Oh, oh, oh. Let's see what he can do with Defilus. He managed to beat Nada with Defilus once. So, let's see what they do. Oh, this is... Oh, he's basically messing up a little bit. But he manages to chase Boxer back. Using his Defilus. Oh, that's quite good. But siege tanks still do splash damage to unborrowed units. And Boxer has pretty much contained Blackman by now. Blackman is getting two island expansions. Boxer is at three bases. Oh, oh and this middle only as well. Oh, Boxer is at four bases. I mean, he probably has a really big army inside his main pretty, pretty soon. He's going for two E-base upgrades, he's getting mass vessels, mass tanks, mass everything. And it's pretty much impossible for a Zerg player to beat a Terran who has four running bases. Especially since it's Boxer. Hmm. Boxer still only has two vessels, he's going to use them to kill the, de uh, to kill the defilers. So no defilers left for Blackman. He could cast one Dark Swarm, though. And Boxer discovers the island expansion and kills it again. I really want to know if he can hear what the commentators say. And I really want to know what the commentators say. Any one of you is able to speak Korean, could probably just switch to the um, Korean stream and have a look at it. Because if Boxer can hear what they say, then Blackman might uh, be able to claim a rematch. This has happened in Counter-Strike already. So it might be happening in StarCraft. Ooh. But the first time in this game where Slayer's Boxer lost some Marines carelessly. But well, I don't see any chance for Blackman to still win here. Boxer discovers the island expansion in the bottom right. And I expect Blackman to surrender quite soon. There's nothing he can do at the moment. Boxer has mass vessels, mass tanks, four running bases. So this game is pretty much lost. And the three Ultralists are not going to change anything about that. Boxer is probably at 3-3 as well. So he has fully upgraded Marines. Which are really good against Ultralists. And Blackman surrenders. So Blackman is going to be in the loser bracket final. It's not decided who is his opponent yet. And Boxer is already in the grand final. So Boxer is at least second at the, this year's WCG.